Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time on the special Christmas. Ho, ho, hello, YouTube. I'm Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. Sit down by the fire, pour yourself another cup of eggnog, because we're going to unwrap the gift that keeps on giving, another web DM about holiday gaming. Let's get to it, motherfuckers. <laughs> Jim, you really gave it to that ham. Yes, really gave so, it to that ham. Let's talk a little uh, holiday gaming, shall we? It's Jim the Davis? holiday season. Uh, Merry Yuletide for your yes. Dungeons and Dragons world. Holiday games have a, a, a long tradition in our group. Yes. Uh, in which the holiday season, the uh, the regular gaming group is broken up. Uh, mm -hmm. That you, so maybe someone's out of town or someone's not there. We usually do a one shot. Yeah. Around the holidays, for us, those include birthdays, usually like a birthday themed game. Yep. But really starts at Halloween with a Halloween themed game. Yep. Maybe a Thanksgiving themed game. Maybe. Maybe a Christmas or a New Year themed. It's sort of like hitting all the holidays. I love holiday gaming, but I'm not going to have a Labor Day game. Or a May Day game or a Fourth of July game or anything like that. But, you know, you can take sort of those like the big holidays, have a lot of fun with them, whether it's running a one shot that yeah. is uh, themed around that particular holiday yeah. or incorporating that holiday into your ongoing game mm -hmm. for some lighthearted fun and fantasy action like for instance <laughs> what do you got for instance audi ran yes. a game one time yes it was the halloween game it's the one halloween game that i am still pissed to this day that i missed okay but it was the thing the thing yes she the did thing. the thing mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a version of D. &D. one of y'all was the thing i was the thing you were the thing. i was the thing and did you win I think I got two of the three other players uh -huh. and was able to arrange for their deaths either through uh, neglect, sort of leaving them in a perilous position yeah. that they were alone and couldn't escape and, and, and therefore died. And then the last one, by the time it was like me and the other player, which I think, if I'm remembering correctly, was Emma. Yeah. And she's always suspicious of me and, and suspected me from the beginning. She was able to escape and, and my character, possessed by the, the extra planar entity that I was, raged at her uh, at her escape but it was a very fun one I know that that audio talked about for years wanting to run a game of paranoia you know you sort of play these kind of spies and servants of the computer yeah. and you have a lot of clones character death is is an expected and and sort of amusing part of the game as well as PvP player versus player uh, conflict yeah and so she wanted to create a situation in which we would turn on each other she gave each one of us a secret that we had so it wasn't just me that had the you're the you're the the bad guy Every one of us had a secret that sort of tied into the game that we wanted hidden and that another player would want found out. Right. Right. And so it created tension between uh, the four of us and then put us in an isolated location where there was sort of a, a, a ticking time kind of like that we were going to be, I forget if we were going to be rescued mm -hmm. or if someone was coming for us. There was a, a time limit on it to yeah. propel the action forward. Uh -huh. I thought it was really fun and just kind of highlights what you can do. Obviously, there's a, a lot of Halloween-themed stuff that you can draw from. I'm about to, to prepare um, a Halloween-themed game for a group of players who, this will be their second Dungeons & Dragons session ever. I'm thinking of modifying Death House. You know, coming up with a Halloween-themed game, whether it's specifically a one-shot and the characters are kind of disposable, uh, uh, that's why I sort of like it, particularly for uh, Halloween, is if you're playing a one-shot with characters that you don't really care that much about, or mm -hmm. or maybe you just say, okay, we're going to use our regular characters, but this is like a, an alternate reality. Yeah, this is outside the flow of normal outside time. Outside the flow of the normal time. And so whatever happens to them, happens to them. Yeah. And then just having an ultra-deadly, I mean, you could do like the slasher flick kind well, of one-shot. I was going to say, maybe they are like, you know what, guys, I got a, I got an uncle who has a cabin up in the woods. Let's go, <laughs> let's go take some time off from adventure. Right. And go to our cabin. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And you get up there, and there's like a fucking like flesh golem or something. Right. Something. I, I think this is one of those where it's like you can you can pit the party against like a vastly superior foe, yes. and then they just have to survive it. Yeah. First level party versus ancient dragon is a bit much, but you can definitely uh, you know at least eight or nine uh, levels above the party is mm -hmm. something where you can really have a monster that hunts the party and tracks them down uh, relentless 
yeah. slasher flick style, or you can do like a haunting type thing where yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you have to um, visit, say, a haunted house or something like that, and deal with a ghost trying to you know re resolve the issue that's keeping the ghost there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as another sort of Halloween themed game. Uh, an idea that I have is kind of a children of the corn thing, where uh -huh. all the kids kind of are being pulled into the cornfield, and of course in the cornfield there's a maze, so it's a oh, maze gosh. maze. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Did you expect any? <laughs> Anything else from me, but it's yeah. And children so you, of the maze. Children of the maze. There we go. And you spell it like yeah. Mm -hmm. You call it maze. I call it corn. Yeah. There we go. So it kicks off the holiday gaming season where you know you run a one shot for people. Uh, you know maybe in a Halloween themed game you use candy for hit points and Thanksgiving is one that <laughs> it could be interesting. Of course, this out, for those our viewers outside of uh, the United States, Thanksgiving is probably a holiday you, know, you might not care much about. The party is having to run from a, a you know a dire turkey or some other kind of weird calamitous event. Like it doesn't want to be eaten or whatever. Or it's the ghost of turkeys past yeah. that's come back to haunt the players. Holiday games are also a great opportunity to run a one shot set with the players playing themselves, oh. right? Like we have done that before where we've played like D&D babies where we played like child versions of ourselves yeah. and we picked a class that we think best represented our child self yeah. and then went on like a Stranger Things Goonies style adventure with it, a holiday themed game is a great opportunity to uh, but have a bit of levity and, and silliness in your D&D. <laughs> what, what if a druid is going around for the Thanksgiving uh, and enlarging and awakening turkeys? Oh God. So now you have fully sentient, large sized turkeys. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you know, you might have to do like the like the old school aboriginals in uh, in 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 Australia, the myth of them having to just burn Australia down because of the giant bird like the you know, leftover dinosaurs that were right. hunting them. Uh huh. Like uh -huh. giant emu type birds, but they're turkeys. They're turkeys, yeah. And turkeys are mean animals, just like normal sized regular turkeys are. Yeah. Really ornery, I mean. So having one the size of a Buick that's chasing you around mm -hmm. uh, is certainly makes for a, 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 an exciting a, a one shot. What happens when dinner is hungry? What happens <laughs> when you're on the plate for dinner? The one that I, I that I've had the most ideas for, and that I've had I, that I personally have run the most one shots for, is a is a Christmas one shot. Yes. Uh, usually, uh, Christmas and the holiday season is the time where it's the most difficult to to get everybody together to game, and so it's usually one of those where it's like two people show up, we make new characters or something. Uh, the the most memorable one I can think of was you and Emma were playing, uh, we were playing Exalted. Yeah. A one shot where you were hired by uh, the Easter Bunny to kill Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. Yeah. That is a total <laughs> rip off of that one Lobo comic. I don't know if anybody out there remembers it, but it's the Lobo comic where it's ultra graphic and he's like shooting and killing a bunch of elves and their brains are all over the place. He has a knife fight with Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. I read it in fifth grade and it changed my life. Um, well, obviously. Because <laughs> here you are. Here I go. So you guys fought like Santa Claus on his rocket sled. I wanted to run one last year where it's like we were, it was going to be an epilogue to the evil game. And so your characters have, have made a reputation across the plains as being, you know, these, these, these badass demigod type characters, you know, Audie's necromancer vampire with the, wielding the power of Orcus and your psychic warrior with, uh, you know, who's also a psychic vampire. Who's also a psychic vampire and the king of Grackle's Tug with, with all that. And it would be like Father Winter has approached the party and said, I need you to travel with me to this obscure plane on the prime material and, and snuff out this new holiday that's going on. And it would be like uh, around the 1100s, mm -hmm. you know, and it would be like the Yuletide and Father Winter's like, there's this new holiday called Christmas mm. and you've got to go fight St. Nicholas with his, oh. you know, treant Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. And a bunch of elves and sprites and, you know, abominable snowmen that he's got at the... And it was basically just going to be like, go to the North Pole and fight Santa Claus and all the little things I can think of for that. Uh, it was going to be like an epic level uh, one shot. Oh um, my God. That <laughs> like, we're still going to do that, right? I mean, we like, still can. We can still do something like I wanna, that. I would want to break out real Vian. I've been wanting to run... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I've been wanting to, to run an epilogue to that uh, campaign for a while. But there's others. It's like, uh, it, you know, Valentine's Day is one. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's a, uh, a Cupid that's uh, going on the loose and, and wreaking a bunch of havoc, shooting people with arrows of love or a succubus 
that's masquerading mm-hmm. as a Cupid, that's perverting the uh, you know the the true romantic love between all these couples and and mm-hmm. causing them to sink into debauchery and yeah. uh, or what if Cupid has gone off his rock his or her rocker uh-huh. and finding couples in love and <laughs> shooting them with real arrows with real so arrows. people are scared to fall in love. <laughs> Like nobody like wants to do this in the holiday. You know, there's the holidays in peril. The now. holidays in peril. Um, Easter is one where you could have like the Easter. There's a lot of weird things you do with the Easter money, magical Easter eggs. Maybe that's the only time of the year that resurrection magic works is near Easter time or something yeah. like that. And the final one for me is like birthdays. A yeah. custom birthday game is one of those that we don't always get to do them, but when we do, you know, I put a lot of thought and effort mm-hmm. into it. And so if you have a group that you've been friends with a long time, running a custom one shot for a birthday can be really fun. Yeah. Uh, Whose birthday was it that, uh, was it Audie that ran the baby unicorn's first birthday? Ba- I forget what happened there. I just we remember had to, the music. Well, with the music was great, <laughs> but no, we had to go around and get all the little parts of the party in uh-huh, order uh-huh, right. because somebody had taken the thing and taken the cake. And so- Oh yeah. Yes, yes, we, right. We were invited into the Glade uh-huh. and found out what we needed and got all the stuff and then we had uh, a yes. party. Sir Pygmy Wart Grump was, yes. uh, was that present there. Yes. Sir Pygmy Wart Grump. I think that's where I played... Ooh, I oh, don't remember. God. Some people were playing themselves. Other people were playing Dungeons and Dragons characters. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going blank on who I played in that <laughs> one. The Halloween was the one where I played Hellboy. Yes, yeah, I Hellboy. I actually pictures online of me dressed up for that. It's pretty epic. <laughs> I, I like holiday games, not just because they're fun and lighthearted and a chance to try out new things and a good excuse for a one-shot, but I, I, I like the idea of incorporating holidays into your regular campaign, right? They're a good opportunity to take a break from the normal sort of day-to-day planning of a campaign and, and, and sort of the flow of events of a campaign and just say, hey, you know what? We're going to use the same characters, same campaign world. Everything that's going on is sort of on pause for a minute while we celebrate this festival, whether it's like Yuletide or the Spring Rites or, yeah. you know, Lover's Holiday kind of thing. Yeah, because sometimes you need a vacation. Sometimes you need a vacation to Fire Island. Yeah. <laughs> Ember Island? <laughs> Ember Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the Ember becomes the Fire Sure. Island. Maybe there is a, a, a Halloween-esque... Um, holiday in your campaign world where the spirits of the dead uh, are, are easily called out that night. One of the ways in which people survive is by donning masks and costumes to appear as spirits of the dead so that the actual spirits of the dead don't attack them or accost them or fight them. Uh, and so you have a kind of scenario where everyone's masked that well, lead, sort of leads off into the fact that masquerades and parties and things like that are very fun to play with. So you could have a, uh, a one shot in which the party members are at a masquerade or a costume party mm-hmm. and they have to navigate these NPCs who they don't quite know who they are, yeah. right? Like who was that? mysterious fox masked lady who came mm-hmm. up to us and beseeched us for aid why what did is that fox say? right why is the uh the, you know the ra- the hooded raven uh watching us from the corner who is that mysterious masked man thanksgiving is another one where maybe you maybe you have a holiday in your campaign world that's about a feast a harvest feast yeah that's going going into winter going into winter the last big feast before uh before before uh, the snow falls and it's a time of family and connections and and good cheer and, and sort of bolstering our spirits before the dead of winter. Um, but something has gone wrong. Someone's made off with the feast or poisoned the, 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 you know, the stuffed peacock that we were going to eat for, uh, for yeah. dinner. Yeah, and now like there's that. no main course. Now yeah. there's no main course and the halfling uh, cook is beside herself and all the other stuff. Where <laughs> are we going to find one in such a short amount of time? Right, where are you going to find one? Well, you're going to have to hunt down a dire turkey and uh, roast it up. And yeah. Whatever. Stuff. <laughs> or find a regular turkey and cast something on it. Right. It. In a lot of uh, Dungeons and Dragons settings, there's some sort of Yuletide, uh, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. analogous holiday. Whether it's Midwinter in Forgotten Realms, Yule and uh, in Dragonlance, uh, you know, something. I think Yuletide is just a, a fun generic uh, kind of holiday to have in mm-hmm. a campaign world. Maybe it takes place on the midwinter solstice. Maybe it takes place uh, close to the new year. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was that one uh, planescape one shot we ran where you guys had to find a Yule log from the plain of Isgard. Yes. Yeah. We had to find the Yule log. <laughs> the Yule log. Yes. The yeah. Yule log. Oh and it was God. like the size of a tr- It was a tree. 
And we oh no, and that was the whole thing is we had to get it up onto the infinite staircase, uh -huh. down a whole thing, uh -huh. and then into another plane, all right. while being accosted the whole time. The whole time. So basically, it becomes like an escort mission. Basically, except you have this giant, like twenty foot long, yeah, hundreds weighs hundreds of pounds log that you're having to take. It will burn all winter. Yeah, um, you've got to get it back to uh, you know, got to get back to your patron for it. Uh, maybe it's a, a case of like um, a silent night approaches the party. With, <laughs> and they have to, you know, engage in some sort of uh, quest on behalf of it. The Silent Knight defeated the Holy Knight, obviously. Right. Obviously. In Dragonlance, there's an actual holiday uh -huh. to celebrate the Cataclysm. Oh God! It's called yes. Dark Cataclysm. Yes. How dark. Would you, how would you? Uh, how would you do that? Well, you can sort of take these things and you can mix in holidays in your campaign's backstory, and it's a good way to showcase your backstory of your world without beating it over your player's head or handing them a campaign Bible. If you have holidays that occur, and, and real world holidays are a good excuse to have an in-game holiday, mm -hmm. you can say like, you know, this is the day that everyone wears gray uh, in, in, in sign of respect for this cataclysm thing, cataclysmic thing that happened hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. ago, and, and the impact of it is still felt today. And it's a good way for DMs to sort of show their world as opposed to tell the pl telling the players about right. it. Right. The same with like New Year's. A New Year's celebration doesn't have to be in winter, it can be sort of any time, yeah. is a good way to interject some sort of like cultural touchstones for your for your characters, whatever region they're traveling through. It's a good way to highlight that region, to highlight the cultural differences of the, the civilizations that you've made up, and to just sort of give your players an excuse to cut loose and have fun with their characters. And, and a nice sort of, like you said, a vacation or a holiday, right, uh, for, your, uh, for your party. Is there any kind of lasting impression other than just the one shot? Is that an important thing? Is there a situation, I guess, yeah. in which you would want the holiday game uh -huh. to have a lasting uh, effect? I mean, like sure. You can have events that take place in the, in the holiday one shot, particularly if you're like injecting a holiday into your ongoing campaign. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, all right, you know, I, I, this is the, uh, the festival of the beginning of spring. It's a time where young love is celebrated and um, the normal rules regarding regarding courtship and mating and pairing up are suspended and young people are just allowed. No one says anything when, when two lovers go off into the woods by themselves. And maybe babies born uh, during this time or conceived during this time are seen as particularly blessed mm -hmm. and not treated as bastards and, and sort of yeah. treated as, as, you know, loved as part of their family. What happened during that spring festival or, or festival of love can carry through. And maybe it's like, oh yeah, you guys are passing through the same place you were last spring and it's all well months. and good. About nine months later when the local barmaid that you had that uh, rendezvous with or mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, you know, or something uh, approaches you with a, um, you know, with a, uh, a blessed child, yeah. then you obviously want to discuss kind of those sort of repercussions with your players. Yeah, and but it's an opportunity. name it Trish Tristan. <laughs> right. And then you have a, uh, an opportunity to, to inject kind of, uh, I don't know. Inject what, Jim Davis? Yeah, you know, well, you can inject a uh, child. <laughs> um, you can kind of uh, have Sorry. an opportunity to, uh, to build off of that one shot and to right. make it be something more than, than sort of what it is. Uh, maybe you have a festival that's like all the rules of society are inverted, like Saturnalia or something, where, yes, uh, this time the servants become the master and the master becomes the servants, and for a week, all of that is, is gone. Carnival is a great one mm -hmm. uh, to, to use, sort of like this massive, uh, just feast of g gluttony and, and indulgence mm -hmm. before a long period of, of fasting or, or religious observation. Those are the kind of things that you can do, and they, they add character to your campaign world, they give your characters an excuse to do something different. People should do more of that, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing like the holidays. <laughs> nothing quite like the holidays. And on today's Web DM, we're going to sit you down by the fire and pour you a cup of egg on the this is Jim Davis, and since it's the holidays, and uh, fuck. Because we're going to unwrap a present for you, which is a web DM about holiday games. So let's fuck up this intro. We're going to give you the gift that keeps on giving, which is another YouTube. Th fuck! What the fuck? I can't say the words in the order that they're supposed to come out of my mouth.
<laughs> Jesus Christ! <clears throat> this happens. This happens. I'm sure somebody's gonna You're see this. You've only been this. doing it for two days. I've only been doing this for two days. <laughs> God. God. I want my mineral water waiting for me when I get done with this. Just blue M&Ms. 